yeah you can see the question now so there is an electric flux density is given then find the amount of the flux passing through the plane defined by x is equal to 3 and y lies between 0 and 2 and z lies between 0 and 1 in a direction which is away from the origin so anybody can you tell me what is the formula or the approach you know the flux density how to calculate the total flux phi equals to close integral of d dot ds and then we Correct. can okay what should be the value of ds here and we can use uh, the uh, ah, in this case can you tell me what is that which is constant here x x x is constant so when x is constant how to define the surface area ds uh, dy dz dx here. positive x or negative x here First of all, you can see here x is equal to 3 is a surface which is parallel to the yz plane, right? And this is your origin. So the direction of this surface represents in the upward direction, right? So the, which is nothing but positive ax only. So you know the vector d and you know the value of ds. So you can do the integration. Three x square z a y cap plus two y a z cap, and your surface area vector will be d y d z into a x cap. So when you are taking the dot product, the total flux you can say double integral d dot d s. So the second and third term you need not to consider because a y dot a x will be zero and a z dot a x will be zero. So you are going to get double integral four x y square z cube d y d z. So y lies from 0 to 2 and z lies from 0 to 3. So x you can take constant, so which is nothing but 4 into 3. So integration of y square into integration of z cube. So you can do it and uh, share the answer now. T. Correct, right? So you are going to get 8 nano coulomb. So since there is nano coulomb, so you have to consider that. So you are going to get 8 nano coulomb. Right. So we'll go to the next one then. See the problem. The electric field on the surface of a perfect conductor is 2 volts per meter and the conductor is immersed in water with a permittivity relative permittivity is 80 here then find the surface charge density on the conductor so you can see here there is an interface which lies between water and the conductor okay so let me call uh, this is your conductor and this is my water surface so let us say some signal is incidenting here and as i said the conductor will not allow any electric field or magnetic field so let us say it is flowing on the surface so he is asking what is the surface charge density on the surface of the conductor that means on the surface of the interface you can say so one medium is water the other one is conductor here you can apply the boundary conditions right because i already know what is the electric field intensity on the surface of the conductor then you can calculate the surface charge density so for an example let me call it as medium 2 and medium 1 so what is the normal component of the electric field intensity so we have given when the signal enters from second medium to the first medium so d normal 1 minus d normal 2 is equal to rho s Okay, 
rho s is a charge density which is present on the interface now when you see the medium one what about the electric field intensity here inside a conductor not on the surface of the conductor inside the conductor so the electric field intensity inside a conductor is zero which means that your tangential component and the normal component both are zero okay when you see for e electric field intensity in medium one which is zero which means your tangential component and normal component both are zero so in that case your d normal one is same as zero so inside a conductor you don't have any electric field vector so you can equate d normal one is equal to zero so what is the magnitude you are going to get d normal two is equal to rho s so rho s value will be so what are permittivity you already know right 80 times epsilon naught so d normal two you can say it as epsilon two into e normal two so all the values are given two volt per meter you can consider it is in medium two only because conductor is not allowing that so that two volt per meter you can consider it as the effect of the water only so epsilon two is equal to 80 epsilon naught correct 80 epsilon naught into two so that is 160 into 1 by 36 pi 10 power minus 9 coulomb per meter square you will get So answer is D, right? So you are going to get 1.41 into 10 power minus 9. So you have any questions in the boundary condition? So let me discuss for some time. So do you have any question regarding boundary condition? Anybody? Okay, we'll go to the next one then. So what is the value of electric flux density at 6, 4, minus 5 caused by a uniform surface charge density of 60 micro coulomb per meter square is located at the plane x is equal to 8. So you know the surface charge, you need to find out the electric flux density. That's it. So the surface charge is located at x is equal to 8. So when you say x is equal to 8, can you tell me what is the perpendicular surface for this? Perpendicular direction. Ax cap, correct. So consider top one as a positive ax and this one as a negative ax. And where is the observer lies here? And where is the observer lies here? You see the observer point. Is it lies above the plate or below the plate? Below the plate. Good. What is the reason? See, you see here at observer point, the value of x is equal to 6. So here the interface is having x is equal to 8. So since x is equal to 6 is lesser than that, so the observer may be somewhere here in the space. So this is your observer. And this is your source. Okay, then what is the electric field intensity now? We know that electric field intensity due to a surface charge is equal to rho s by 2 epsilon into what is the direction here? Good. What is the direction of the electric field intensity here? Good. Negative x. Yes. So since you have to calculate the electric flux density, that is epsilon times E, so the value will be rho s by 2 into minus Ax cap. So rho s is nothing but 60, so we will get 30 into minus Ax cap micro coulomb per meter square. So that's it, hence option A is correct. Correct. Next one. 
You see this? So take your own time, not a problem, no hurry, and tell me the correct answer. So there is a parallel plate capacitor consisting of two different dielectric materials as shown in the figure. So this is one medium. This is one medium and the rest of the things is another medium. So the middle dielectric slab is placed symmetrically with respect to the plates. So there is another dielectric layer which is placed symmetrically with respect to these two. If the potential difference between one of the plates and the nearest surface of the dielectric interface is 2 volts, then find the ratio epsilon 1 by epsilon 2. So what is the meaning he has given? So this is your 10 volt. This problem shall I discussed in the classroom or is it an assignment problem? There is an assignment problem. Okay, you have solved it, huh? No, sir, it was a doubt for me. But the answer is uh, 3 is to 2. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, anyhow, we'll discuss that. Okay, this is your 10 volt. And between this plate and the nearest surface, he has given uh, 2 volt uh, difference. So what will be the potential on this case now, on this conductor? Are you saying, what is the potential on this conductor then? Eight volt, correct. Because since the potential difference is two, this is 10 here and this is eight. So similarly, this is zero volt. And can you tell me what is the potential on this surface? Two volt, correct, that's it. Then find the ratio epsilon one by epsilon two. So you can see here, there is a difference of two volt and there is a difference of two volt. So you can see the dielectric, what will be the potential difference? Between this one and this one, there is a 10 volt. So already this plus two and plus two has gone. So there will be a potential difference of six volt in this region. Between these two, there is a potential difference of six. So consider this is medium one for an example, and this is your medium two. So in case of a capacitor, we know that depends on the potential difference, there will be the charge. So the charge acquired by the capacitor is equal to C into V. Because this is having a certain capacitance, this is having a certain capacitance. Based on the voltage you are applying, the charge remains constant because the area of the cross section remains same. So your charge density is same. And as a result, your charge on each conductor remains same. Okay, so when you see for both medium 1 and medium 2 right now, so your Q will be constant, which is nothing but Cv. I can say C1 by C2 is equal to V2 by V1 using inverse law. Using this equation, C1 by C2 is equal to V2 by V1. C1 is the capacitance in this region and C2 is the capacitance in this region. I hope you are able to see that. So you can find out then now. And at the same time, uh, let me write the distance also because this middle dielectric slab is placed symmetrically. So what is the meaning of that? Suppose between outermost conductor, let us say this uh, is D. So what is the distance between this and this now and this and this? So this has been placed symmetrically. So what should be the distance here and here? D by 4. Others? Correct. If it is symmetrical, it means you can assume it something like this. This is D by 4 and this is D by 4 and this is D by 2. Then you can calculate this, this and this. You will get total is equal to D. Right? Now, calculate the capacitance value. When you are taking the ratio of the capacitance, so we know that capacitance is equal to A epsilon divided by D. Okay, area remains same, you need not to take. So when you take the ratio, area gets cancelled. 
and epsilon is nothing but epsilon 1 divided by d1 d1 is nothing but d by 4 whole divided by so when you are taking to c2 area remains same again that will be epsilon 2 divided by here the spacing is d by 2 is equal to v2 by v1 so v2 is nothing but there is a potential difference of 6 volt in medium 2 and there is a potential difference of 2 volts in medium 1 so you can simplify that you will get epsilon 1 by epsilon 2 is equal to 3 is to 2 Okay, we'll go through the next problem then. This is a very interesting question. See, you can see that there is a point charge of Q is placed between two earth intersecting conducting planes at an inclination of 45 degrees. Then find the number of image charges. So there are two conducting plates, something like this. And of course, he has given it is both are earth. That means this is a ground plane and this is a ground plane. Between this, there is a charge of Q coulombs. So these two are inclined at an angle of 45 degrees. So what will be the number of image charges? So anybody? You take time and tell me, not a problem. Yes, the answer is 7, how it is? So can you tell me how it is? Answer is 7 only, correct, how? So one formula is there that, uh, that 360 degree by uh, angle minus yeah. 1. Uh, who told that formula then? <laughs> so somehow I got in some uh, like uh, that theoretical your uh, online PDF is there. Yeah. Somehow. Okay. That I remember. Okay. Anyhow, how that formula came then? Okay. I will discuss it. Not a problem. So let us take one by one. Okay. So first of all, suppose if we have two planes, let us say this is on positive axis and this is a negative axis. This is also ground, this is also ground. So if you place one positive charge here, we already seen if we infinite ground plane, it is going to create an image charge on the other side. Right? So right now in this case, between these two, what is the angle existing? 180 degrees. So one is on the positive side and the other one is on the negative side. So if there are two planes which are inclined by at an angle of 180 degrees, it is going to create one image charge. Right? So what is the meaning of that? If two conducting plates are inclined by 180 degrees, the total charges are equal to 2. And image charges is equal to 1. Okay. Now let us consider the different case. So there are two conducting plates and this is ground and this is ground so this point charge is located here so what will be the number of image charges in this case see here let me extend it something down something down 
I want to get the potential will be zero on this surface. Means there should be some image charge which is located below. Similarly, I want to get some ground potential will be zero. Means exactly symmetric to that there will be another negative charge. Okay. Is it or anything still? Is there any image charges existing or this much? Are you able to un uh, are you able to follow what I'm saying? So, what I was saying here, in order to have a zero volt potential here, symmetric to that, there should be one image charge. In order to have a zero potential here, symmetric to this, I need to have another negative charge. Is it or any other image charge is existing? There will be another charges existing. Why? Because suppose if you assume that the image charges is only this much, what will happen exactly at the center right now? So this point is also lies on the ground plane, right? So when you have three charges, will you get zero volt potential here? When you have three charges, you won't get. Yeah, you have uh, if you want to have a zero volt potential at the origin symmetric to this, there should be another charge also. So this will be a positive charge. Then what will happen exactly at this point? These two gets cancelled potential and these two gets cancelled. So what is happening here? So when you are having a 180 degrees inclination, you are getting number of image charges is equal to one. And when you are having a 90 degrees angle, you are going to get number of image charges is equal to three. So in the same fashion, if there is an inclination of five, I can generalize it something like this. The number of image charges is equal to 360 degrees phi minus one. Right, because you can see here for 180 degrees, you can calculate number of image charges now. 360 by 180 minus one, you will get one. So for 90 degrees, you will get 360 divided by nine, 90 minus one, you will get three. So if two connecting plates inclined at an angle of theta, the number of charges is image charges is given by this. So you can substitute that now. So in the given problem, the inclination is 45 degrees. So you calculate the number of charges, image charges. So we are going to get seven. You got the point now, everyone, all of you. We'll go to the next one then. Now, why are you taking it as positive? Which one? This one, huh? This one is a positive. Which one you are? Yeah, yeah, that one, sir. Why is it plus Q? Plus Q image there. Now, suppose if it is minus Q, what will happen? Because of these two, it will get cancelled. Okay. You, you got my point. What I was saying here, see. Sir, potential is scalar, right? So, the, these two also will not cancel, right? Minus Q and minus Q. No, it's not about cancelling. See, suppose if I assume it is minus Q, what will happen here? The potential at this point, 1 will be Q by 4 pi epsilon into R. Okay. Yes, sir. Remaining will be 3 into minus Q by 4 pi epsilon R. If you take oh, negative, okay. because three charges are there, yeah. will you get zero here in this case? No, no, no. Yeah. Then in that case, it should be plus Q only. Then only two positive charges are there, two negative charges are there. So it will be neutralized. Yes. yes. Correct? Yeah. So see the next problem. So there is a vector which has been given, then find the integral h dot dl and it's a closed line integral so that c represents a circle of radius 2 meters centered at origin so can you tell me how to do Yes. So since the line is closed, we can make use of the Stokes theorem. So 
the line integral is converted into closed surface integral like this curl of h to ds so what will be the surface area in this case because he is not mentioned uh, on which surface is it, it is located it is centered at origin fine but is it lies in y plane or z plane doesn't matter uh, he has not given right but okay anyhow that is not a matter in this case first find the curl of h find the curl of h so find the curl of this particular vector so what is the answer you are getting curl of h good you are getting zero so x cap into you will get this minus this x minus x so similarly you will get ay coefficient as y minus y because it is symmetrical and az coefficient as z minus z so you are going to get the curl of h will be zero so since curl of h is zero it doesn't matter what is the surface area so you can straight away say it is zero right we will go to the next one then so there is an electric dipole having a dipole moment of this one you can see here is located at the origin along the z axis then find the electric potential at r is equal to 2.5 and theta equal to 30 and phi is equal to 40 so this problem we seen but that time when you are discuss the observer is at uh, located in xyz plane and this time it is in spherical system so this is your dipole which is centered at origin so this is your 0 0 0 and your observer is located here r equal to 2.5 and theta equal to 30 phi is equal to. so find the electric potential here so switch on your mics now anyone tell me what is the formula for electric potential so the distance between source and observer is r you can say so remember what is the formula i given in terms of dipole moment Dipole yeah. moment divided by 4 pi epsilon r square into dot product with uh, along that vector. Uh, yeah, yes. So p bar dot ar cap divided by 4 pi epsilon r square. In other words, qd cos theta by 4 pi epsilon r square. That only we have represented in this form. And you can see here ar cap is nothing but the original vector r bar divided by modulus of r bar. So this is your vector r bar. So how you can say that is equal to p bar dot r bar by 4 pi epsilon into r cube. Is it correct? So ar cap I was representing by r bar by modulus of r bar. So in the denominator this r square into r you will get r cube. And in the numerator it will be r bar. So first of all what you need to do you convert this observer point in case of a uh, into rectangular so we will have x1 y1 z1 that will be x2 y2 z2 so then you can find the vector r bar as the observer point minus the source point okay so x1 y1 z1 will be 0 0 0 x2 y2 z2 you convert this spherical point in terms of rectangular so do that so what is the value what is the conversions x2 y2 z2 spherical to rectangular did you remember anybody yes x is equal yeah. to r sin ah. theta cos phi okay remaining y y will be r sin theta sin phi okay next one and z will be r uh, cos uh, 
theta r cos theta yeah correct so you can substitute the value and find out x2 y2 z2 So if you are done with that, we force the values of x2, y2, z2 in the group. So anybody done? What is the value of x2? So you can use the calculators and do tell me quickly. So what is the value of x2 you got? So anybody done, you can share the values here, x2, y2, z2, 0. 0.957, x2, correct, and y2, 0. 0.803, yeah, z2, 2.165, correct, 2.16, right, so you can cross check if, if anybody not done, then what is the vector r bar here, so your x1, y1, z1 will be 0, 0, 0. So when you are taking r bar x2 minus x1 is same as 0.957 only. So you, it is your x2, y2, z2 and this is your x1, y1, z1. So when you take the r bar x2 minus x1 because x1 is 0 you will get the difference is x2 only. Similarly y2 minus y1 you will get y2 only. z2 minus z1 will be z2 only or 0, 0, 0 here. So the vector r bar can be written as 0.957 ax cap and 0 0.803 ay cap plus 2.16 az cap and find the modulus of that so i was writing the value you can all of you can cross check that you will get the modulus is 2.5 meters so you can verify that modulus you will get uh, 2.5 so directly substitute in the formula so the dipole moment is 3ax cap minus 2ay cap plus az cap nano coulomb meter means 10 power minus 9 dot product width so this r bar vector 0.803 ay cap plus 2.16 az cap divided by 4 pi epsilon value will be 1 by 36 pi into 10 power minus 9 Parade per meter into modulus of our whole cube means 2.5 whole cube. So you can simplify the value. So anyhow, I will write the value. You can cross check that. It is just only the substitution rate. So you are going to get 1.97 volts. So is it okay? Will you verify later? Because I have other problems to discuss. Yes, sir. Yeah, you can verify it later. So see the next one. This is a very interesting problem. So there is an infinite line charge having a charge density of 30 nanocoulomb per meter is located at 
x is equal to 0 comma z equal to 3 and a perfect conducting ground plane is located at z equal to 0 then find the electric field intensity at 2 comma 5 comma 0 so let me say this is your x axis and y axis and z axis So first of all, can you tell me in which direction the line charge will be located? X is equal to 0 means it should be lies in the YZ plane, right? And Z equal to 3 means from the Z equal to 0 plane, it is at a distance of 3, three meter. So Z equal to 0 is the XY plane. So from the ground plane at a distance of 3 meter, so it may be lies in the space something like this. This is nothing but X is equal to 0, comma Z equal to 3. Okay, and what is the next question he has given? This royal is 30 nano coulomb per meter. And there is a perfect conducting ground plane located at Z equal to 0. That means this XY plane is a conducting ground plane. So whenever this is a perfect conducting ground plane, this method can be solved by using method of images. Right. So if we have a line charge, it is going to create an image charge. So that image charge will be below the XY plane. So let me represent, I have represented this as an image charge. So what will be the charge density of image charge? What will be the charge density of image charge? Sir, negative of the original. Yeah. And can you tell me what is the position? What is the position? So the original right. charge is at x is equal to 0, z equal to 3. And what about image charge now? z is minus 3. Very good. Because the interface is z equal to 0. So if you take the mirror of that, only the z component going to change. So you will get x is equal to 0, z equal to minus 3. Right? So you take it as this is first line charge and this is your second line charge. And you know the observer position, right? Then calculate the electric field intensity. So I hope this configuration is clear for all of you. So if there is any charge placed above a conducting plane, it is going to create an image charge. And that magnitude will be opposite of that. And the position is also, so if the original charge is located above the plane, image charge will be below the plane. So when you are going below the plane, your Z will be negative. Yeah. Then find the electric field intensity at 2 comma 5 comma 0. So first of all, due to an, a line charge, the electric field intensity formula, if you remember, that will be rho L by 2 pi epsilon rho into direction will be radial direction. Okay. So in this case, your source will be located where? When you consider the first one, first line charge, your source will be located at x is 0 and y is indefinitely varying. So y is infinitely varying. You can see here it is parallel to y axis. So y value can be anything which is varying from minus infinity to infinity. And that value will be 3. And your observer is located at 2 comma 5 comma 0. So what is the value of E1 now? So rho L. You can say magnitude only, rho L divided by 2 pi epsilon into rho. So can you tell me what is the direction can you write? What is the direction? Since this charge is positive, the direction will be from source to observer. So this is your source and let me say the observer is here. So the electric field intensity direction will be source to observer. So in that case, the radial direction will be given by how to write any vector joining from source to observer? That is the position of observer minus position of the source divided by the modulus.
right and similarly this row is also the modulus of this so all the values are given can you tell me find out what is the value of e1 now and one more thing what should be the value of the constant you will consider here what should be the value of constant you will consider sir 5 what will be the reason good sir because it is infinite line charge yeah it is an inf okay why don't you consider 3 or 4 sir uh, to 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 make a vector directly yeah. from e to the point of interest mm, no in other words what you can say see this is the line charge which is parallel to y axis right if you see the line charge this is parallel to y axis agree agree with my point yes yes sir so when any line charge is parallel to y axis do you have any electric field component in y direction no yes so how to affect that so since in order to cancel the electric field in y direction you should take the constant value is same as the observer location then only your y component get nullified agree agree yes sir yeah so that is the reason why you should consider constant value is equal to so in order to there is no y direction okay then you can go ahead and tell me the value okay so electric field intensity will be i will substitute the value of rho l afterwards rho l by 2 pi epsilon into this value you can say 2 ax cap and y value gets cancel and z value will be minus 3 az cap divided by so the modulus of this one will be root over 2 square plus 3 square right and again there is a one more uh, rho value will be there so i can say straight away this will be 2 square plus 3 square simply so this magnitude and this magnitude will be rho square so rho square value will be 2 square plus 3 square okay this is your e1 so similarly you do the value of e2 so what is the value of royal royal by 2 pi epsilon into 2 ax cap minus 3 az cap divided by th that modulus whole square i was getting 2 square plus 3 square and similarly you can calculate for e2 so e2 will be something like this again it is parallel to y axis and located at x is equal to 0 comma z equal to minus 3 so your source is at 0 constant comma minus 3 and the observer is located at 2 5 so how to write e2 in that case so when you are writing the magnitude it will be same only rho l by 2 pi epsilon only this minus sign whatever i have given this you are accounting in the direction so because of this negative sign the electric field intensity is from observer to source something like this so what will be the direction in that case you can say zero constant comma minus 3 minus 2 comma 5 comma 0 divided by this modulus whole square because already there is one row here so we'll get zero minus 2 5 zero row here so what is the value we'll get the so same thing here also the constant value consider it as phi thus you don't have any electric field parallel to the y axis so to account for that constant value will be phi so rho l by 2 pi epsilon into this you will get minus 2 and there is no y coefficient and z coefficient will be minus 3 so minus 2 ax cap and minus 3 az cap divided by modulus remains same here because the distance from the line charge and the image charge will be same 
So find out what is electric field intensity now. E is equal to E1 plus E2. So can you simplify and tell me the value now? So when you are adding E1 and E2, your X term gets cancelled. So here it is plus 2X and this is minus 2X. And you will have only the Z component. So do it and tell me the value. So your X terms will be nullified and you are going to get only the Z terms. Only the Z terms means you can straight away multiply whatever the Z coefficient is there with 2 times V. So that will be 2 into rho L by 2 pi epsilon into minus 3 AZ cap divided by 2 square 3 square. So all the values are given, you substitute that. So, royal value is 30 into 10 power minus 9. Yes. Any questions? Sir, minus uh, 2.20. Minus 2.20, na? No? Somewhere you have done mistake. Okay, I will talk to you. Yes, yeah. 83.07. No? Please verify all of your uh, all your answers. So I was getting minus two forty nine. Yes, good. You are going to get minus two forty nine AZ cap volts per meter. Correct. Okay, if in order to solve any problem in method of images, you should be more careful. Two points you have to remember. The first point, when you consider the image charge, the magnitude you should consider exactly opposite of the original charge. And at the same time, when you are considering the electric field intensity due to the image charge, so whatever the negative sign is there, but when you are considering the magnitude, you should consider it as positive. But that negative sign will be accounted using your direction. So if the charge is positive, electric field is from source to observer. So because of the negative sign, you should consider it from observer to source. So remember, when you take the magnitude, you consider positive. Yeah. Yes, any questions? Sir, uh, here, why did we take that? Uh, there will be negative field in Y. There will be? No electric field in Y direction. Why are we taking that? Because it's... Uh, no, no, see here, because the... Con uh, conducting ground blood, that forget about it. X is equal to 0 and Z equal to 3. Is it parallel to which axis? That means I given fix the value of X and fix the value of Z. So which means that Y is indefinitely varying, right? Yes, sir. So which means that the line charge is parallel to Y axis. That is what the meaning? Yes, sir. So when the line charge is parallel to Y axis, first of all, suppose if you have any charge which is distributed along Y axis. Okay. Got it, got it. So yeah. Perpendicular to the y yeah, axis. electric field will be perpendicular to y, right? So you don't have any electric field in y direction. Okay. Yeah. Okay, next one. See the next problem. So calculate the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor having an area of cross section 10 inch square and your epsilon r is equal to 6 and having a plate separation of 0 0.01 inch so this is a simple parallel plate capacitor find the capacitance so the capacitance in a parallel plate capacitor we already know straight away a epsilon divided by d 
but the thing is here all the dimensions are given in inch so but uh, your epsilon value you know in meters right farad per meter so the thing is first of all you have to convert all this dimensions into centimeter or meter then the problem becomes simple so you can calculate you can use this formula 1 inch is equal to 2.58 centimeter so then calculate the area now so area is 10 inch square so 1 inch is equal to 2.58 into 10 power minus 2 whole square because inch square means 2.58 cm whole square into epsilon value will be 6 into we can consider 1 by 36 pi into 10 power minus 9 divided by so the separation is 0.01 inch so 0.01 into 2.58 into 10 power minus sir so 1 inch is 2.54 you can consider 54 it is so you can simplify and tell me the value now what is the capacitance you are getting so once you are done with that share the answer here in the group anybody done 1.34 nanofarad correct yes so everybody verify the answer will be 1.34 nanofarad okay you can do the calculation later if anybody not done so go to the next problem so see so there is a long solenoid of radius r and having a n turns per unit length so carries a time dependent current given by this so then find the magnitude of induced electric field at a distance r by 2 radially from the axis of the solenoid so what he has given this is your solenoid this is your solenoid and the radius of the solenoid is equal to r this is your radius of the solenoid and it carries a time varying current Okay. Then find the magnitude of the induced electric field. See, first of all, why there will be electric field induced? Because the flux, which is a time varying, so you are passing a time varying current. There will be a time varying flux, which will be generated. Right. So because of the time varying flux, there will be some voltage induced in the loop. So he is asking you to consider that loop should be at a distance of r by two from the axis of the solenoid. So if you take this is the axis of the solenoid. and you consider at a distance of r by 2 this is your r by 2 in this loop how much voltage will be induced so you consider a loop like this so this radius will be r by 2 okay so to find the induced rma first of all what you need to do here find the magnetic field intensity and calculate the flux per each time so when you know the flux per each time you can uh, differentiate i mean you can use the faraday's law d5 by dt to calculate the induced voltage so can you try and tell me the answer now so first calculate the magnetic field intensity in this loop and then calculate the magnetic flux density so once you know the magnetic flux density you can calculate the flux per each time so that will be flux density multiplied by area 
then you can use the formula d5 by dt okay so first everybody calculate what is the magnetic field intensity in this loop so if you want to calculate the magnetic field intensity in this loop you have to consider a loop having a radius of r by 2 so you can use the ampere's law there anyhow you try and tell me the answer no problem so please take your time and tell me the correct answer. So anybody done with that? 1 by 4 pi i r. Okay. It is i f t divided by 4 pi r. i divided by 4 pi r. Is yes, it? Sir. Mm, yes, sir. No. Let me see. So if you are taking integral h dot dl. Okay. You have taken only one loop. So because I was taking a circle which is covering only one loop, what will be the total enclosed current? Since I have taken one loop, I can consider it as I. I have not taken the complete length. Okay. Yes. Then H into what is the closed line integral of this one? 2 pi r. 2 pi r by 2, right? Because you have taken a yes. loop at r by 2 radius. Yes, sir. Yeah. So in that case, what you will get? H is equal to i by pi Other into r yeah yeah any question Other you have the i is uniformly flowing to the cross section correct correct if so, nothing is given i have given you can assume it as a uniform uh, yeah but that i will be divided right uh that is i not cos omega t that area wise it will be no no divided. that i will substitute later see this is my i oh, is nothing okay. but i of t okay okay this capital i is i of t okay so whatever the current flowing through that divided by pi r now, what will be the flux generated in that case right now? You know, the flux is nothing but the flux density multiplied by the area. So, you know, here in a solenoid, the flux is in this direction. And since you have taken the loop in this direction, your area also lies in the same direction. So everybody got my point? To calculate the flux per each turn, what you need to do? Multiply the flux density with the area. Okay, what is the flux density per each turn right now? B is equal to mu H. H can be written as I by pi R into. So what is the area of this loop? So you have taken a loop at a distance of R by 2. So your area becomes pi R square. But of course your R will be R by 2 whole square now. Because loop area will be R by 2. So what is the flux per each turn you got now? Answer is C. Correct. Good. So what is the flux per each turn you are getting right now? Mu I R divided by 4. So understood here? So once you know the flux per each turn, to calculate the induced DMF, you should consider the total flux. I already told you in the previous case. Okay. So the flux per each turn is equal to mu i r by 4. So the flux throughout the total is equal to n into flux per each turn. So that is equal to n into mu i r divided by 4. Okay, so hence the induced EMF will be magnitude if you are finding out. That is equal to d phi total divided by dt. So you can see here n mu r but mu is nothing but substitute not a problem because nothing is mentioned means you can take free space n mu into d i by dt so you can calculate what is the answer finally we will get 
so r by 4 into mu naught into n so if i are taking the differentiation of current you you can get i naught omega sin omega t differentiation of cos is minus sign of course you are taking the magnitude so any questions here in this problem So, sir, that uh, yeah. I current that is flowing through the entire cross section of that uh, solenoid. Yeah, the, the, in the solenoid, actually, the current is flowing through the entire cross section like this. And this is a time varying current right now. Okay, sir, got it, got it. Actually, yeah. it is, I was getting confused with coaxial cable. Sorry, sir. Okay, okay, right. Okay. okay, first, what you need to do if you want to calculate the induced EMF. You should know the flux. So if you want to, uh, it's again, uh, you can do the reverse engineering, something like this. If you want to calculate induced VMF, you need to know the total flux. So if you not need to know the total flux, you should calculate the flux per each turn. So if you want to know the flux per each turn, you should know what is the flux density. And you should know the area. So area is anyhow clear. And to calculate the flux density, you need to know what is the magnetic field intensity. So then what is the approach here right now? You start with finding the magnetic field intensity. Then you know the magnetic flux density. Then calculate flux per turn. Calculate total flux. Then find the induced EMF. Yes. So that is the reason why I started with magnetic field intensity calculation. Then I have gone that way. So anyhow, let's see the last problem. So there is a current density in a medium is given by this one. Then find the total current passing through R is equal to 0.8 meter and theta lies between pi by 12 and pi by 4 and phi lies between 0 and 2 pi. So can anybody say what is the formula? If you know the current density, how to calculate the current? Anybody say we, this we already done in so many times. So J into area. J into area. That means double integral J dot ds. Right. Yeah. What will be the surface area in this case right now? So if you look at the surface, which is varying, your theta is varying and phi is varying. So R square sine theta d theta d phi. Yeah, theta is varying and phi is varying. So you will get R square sine theta d theta d phi. What about the direction? AR cap. Yeah, because R is constant, your direction will be AR cap. So everything is known. I think you can find out the I. You know the value of J and you know the surface area. And you can see theta is varying from uh, these limits and phi is varying from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, I think uh, it's already time. So you can do it. Okay, I, uh, you can do it and you can verify the answer will be 7.4 years. Just only the integral part, you can uh, go ahead, I think. So will you be able to do or shall I do this? It's your choice. Yeah, we can do, sir. Yeah. So approach is clear, right? You know the current density, you know the area. You just take the, uh, you just take the double integration. So we'll get an answer. So the answer will be 7.45 amperes.